Ooh, so where we left off was like our second day of school and suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys haven't worried or anything. Eh? We could choose the club over a boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Uh, boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Ika quizzically glances at me. Oh, never mind you that too. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ha ha ha. That makes no sense now. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. P piano? I, I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I, I don't really. Some hype from it, Moon. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit yeah, better, yeah, I will. Profit with the sub 21 month. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, cowboy. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. Oh. To put any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Oh man. Troll by Twitch notification? It says Doki Doki Lit Club. Did it have some chloroform left over for a friend's visit in stream time? Uh oh, no, he's just napping. Yuri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Nats Natsuki disappeared into the closet. No, he's down. He's taking a nap, dude. He's taking, taking a nap. He was like, I need a nap, I think. Because he's... Alright, so Paul's story for a second. He's, uh... He, like, works security for City Hall back in, like, Philadelphia, Camden area. And so he's up every day. Like, we were out until about 2. And then we came home, played pool until about 3. I fell asleep at like 5. He fell asleep. But even then, he woke up. Like, he's up every single day at like 5 a.m., even if he doesn't want to be. So he woke up early this morning, and now he's passed out having like second sleep. So, Graham. Anyway. Hey, Yuri. suddenly notice that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I did not mean to interrupt you. Ah, uh, no. I was just kind of, I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that is the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. 
there's one thing I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. She stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, not with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Mary hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle and a kitty. Go with my green screen cat. Plug this into the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why, why not? Shall we go then? Yes. Hey, where are you two going off to? Eh? We just. Yuri was going to make some tea, so. I suddenly, I realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. You're feeling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one person job, isn't it? It's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve cowboy and club activities? Uh, uh? My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, cowboy. Ah... Uh. Harry quickly exits the room, and then I follow him. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? Oh, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. C cowboy How come even when I do something bad, you're being so nice to me? Cause nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody are perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them anyway. You always amplify things in your head. Your mind turn a straight rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Cowboy, I really like being friends with you. Ah ha ha. Thank you, Yuri. I like being friends with you feel kind of awkward something like I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yes. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain, built the water pitcher, and returned to the classroom. Cowboy, do you like oolong tea? Ah. Uh, Yes. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. 
really do this properly, don't you? Of course! I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. What's up? Yeah, playing Doki Doki. You wanna, you wanna help voice act it? I know, well, you could play one of the waifus. You could play one of the waifus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not like playing with your dick or something I'm like yeah so what are you doing <laughs> well chat's laughing <coughs> right. huh. yeah she's sleeping too Mayor Evan was taking a nap so I decided to stream you just want to borrow my car? Alright, remember where Publix is at? Alright. Yeah, I think the keys are in it. Yeah. Uh, you were talking teriyaki chicken. I think rice goes well with teriyaki chicken usually. I don't know. You have the dealer's choice. In that case... You'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. Even with this at max, it is still fucking slow, dude. Why? To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. That so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that is a great Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always so worrying about me, cowboy. It's very endearing. Yes. He wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want sure you pour a cup of tea for each of us. Cowboy, I have another request. You mind if we sit on the floor today? Well, why is it that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. That's so. I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that when I'm reading. Uh, yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. A bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. Take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Ooh. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. 
She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have it as much as you want. Oh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Like my... hang on a second here. My camera's fucking up. Despite... no, autofocus is off. I don't know why I looked at this phone. Maybe it's just my eyes that are fucking up. If I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Oh, yes, you're right. I did not even think about that. My bad, you. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder time reading it. And as a result, the left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, that's a kiss. Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation is completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri's lip closes her lips over it. <laughs> Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. <laughs> Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, uh, cowboy... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have it done with that. Uh, that's... Uh, it, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but... Yes, that's all it was. Y yeah, then... You don't need to stop or anything. I... I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. <laughs> How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Uh. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! Ooh, uh. Uh. Yuri jolts back. Time to share poems! Cowboy, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yes, of course. Okay, thanks! The spell is abruptly broken. Uh, I'll take care of the cups. Yes. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling that this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Yuri! Let's see what you've written for today. There's the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Cowboy! This one might be even better than yesterday's! How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you all kind of techniques worth practicing. 
Maybe that is why you did a good job explaining. Really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. To what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Riri, I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? I figured you'd just buy some. Oh, I mean, if there if there is, I don't know where it would be. I would just I would just buy whatever you want to use to be safe. And there's probably some, but Paige would know where it's at. I wouldn't. Do right. you really think that? Again, your nods. Oh, even your close friends. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that's fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same night that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions on the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Help with the sound. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. A little, a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yes. If I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it is supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, cowboy? Well, yes. 
I guess I do. I feel like... I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, it makes us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, cowboy. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's really just a nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Mary smiles sincerely at me. In just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Next. Hey, she wasn't talking about killing the raccoon. She was talking about how feeding it became like her new addiction. Even though she knew it was bad, slicing the bread, feeding the raccoon made her happy. Slicing the bread, feeding the raccoon. It's, she was Pavlonian conditioning herself. Let's go. Let's go to Sayori. Ooh! I like this one, cowboy. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. Hehehe. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. Not sure that's exactly how it works. And again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yes. Maybe. Honestly, I don't know what kind of writing you write in the first place. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, You want to write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well... I don't really know what you mean. But I'll try to keep it in mind! Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy. And the sad dude. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow! Sayori, that is unexpectedly poetic. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all! Thanks, Cowboy Senpai! I should go write that down then! You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles! I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar at the secret place where I keep all my dreams Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. 
It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts of bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through the locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That got pretty fucking dark. Like she's trying to trying to keep happy thoughts and be happy for everyone but she can't keep it up holy crap Sayori did you really write this of course I did didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever yes but I mean I did not expect something like this coming from you Anika taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind you. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! Gotten pretty passionate about this. Oh. I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Please do not get ahead of yourself. Yuri's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, let's see what fucking Natsuki wrote this time around. <laughs> well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. I'm trying too hard to be serious. Uh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. I'm just... I'm just it's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you don't really suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stopped short all of a sudden. Tell me. Uh? You're not. You're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? Keep your voice down. You know Yuri would love this. This kind of this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean. I, I mean. E Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I'm so done with you! Suki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem! If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me! Ouch. This is what I get for letting a young girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Damn, we don't even read what her poem was. Hi again, cowboy. 
How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <coughs> uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. <coughs> Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. <laughs> Ugh. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? I guess so. Can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about the literature, it's like a right turns on inside of her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on inside that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean... But I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Uh, you completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. And he kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well... There's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Save me, load me. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Uh, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. Ugh. I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it is about, though. Uh, sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. <coughs> so putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. 
Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. This bitch is a little, uh, something's not right with her. <clears throat> Do I want more coffee? What do y'all think? Is more coffee a good thing or a bad thing? I'm 16. I guess it's early enough I could get coffee. Maybe another coffee would be good. Coffee plus one. Yeah. Let's get through this this school day and then I'll go get another cup. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's, that's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <laughs> um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Siri's putting in all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Siri, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You you didn't you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I I agree with Natsuki. I could never. In my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where you're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings! Being intimate with yourself! Finding new horizons! And having fun! That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it tells it takes a standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Suki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it is too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monika have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Whew. I 
Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. Uh, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! M Monika! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh -huh, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem! Monica begins reciting her poem. A clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monika finishes the recitation. Four of us applaud. Monika takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monika! Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Wow! Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It, it's called... After a Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns, and its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Not that we didn't want to applaud her. We were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Mm. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! I guess I'm next then! Sari hops up out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow! Ah! Uh, ah <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori! It, it's a lot harder than I thought! How did you guys do it so easily? It's not to think of like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Zuri begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Siori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice, oh, it gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to read more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Cowboy liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? 
came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. Some hype. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh! I know what you mean! That's... well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hee <laughs> hee. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hey! Don't make me go before Cowboy! Not like I can compare to you guys anyway! Might as well let Cowboy lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki? It is fine! It's fine! I might as well get it over with. But it's not right I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I've wrote for today. I stand up, step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yes. Maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The pound is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? Be because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Suki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Some hype from Trevor Russell. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. Words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say! You better not make me do it again! Ah, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Datsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it is like now. So make sure to pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. They should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised you're putting in all this effort for the club. It, it makes me really happy. Uh, yeah. No problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up. But let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day! I can't wait! I... I can do this. I... I can do this. All right, dear. Stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori! Oh. <clears throat> Ready to go, Sayori! Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that! It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee <laughs> hee! guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. it. It must be a little nice, though. 
Uh, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, cowboy. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori! Hmm? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. And I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So... Let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Oh. W what would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... Better save. Better save. I would still walk home with Sayori. I would walk home with Yuri. Actually, this seems like a good time to get coffee. And let chat fucking give some input. Alright, chat. Who should we walk home with? I'm gonna go make a coffee. Y'all vote, and then we'll make our decision when I get back.
Wow. 51.7 to 48.3. That. That is a close ass pull. Wow. Chat. Wow. Here it is. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... I isn't she beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said! Ah, <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Uh, it just flopped from Sayori to Yuri before you sat down. Damn! <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore. You know? Need you? Sayori? can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. S sorry Everyone is different. Nobody in this club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. Conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. Yeah, I would be. Basically said she's gonna kill herself. You won't need me anymore. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. If there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. I feel like shit's gonna go down at the festival, isn't it? All right, <sighs> we're going 100% Yuri, infallible, effulgent, secretive, unrestrained. Misery, termination. Uncontrollable. Philosophy. Heaven sent. Just the longest word every time. Night gown. Oh, that's hers. <coughs> Unrequited. Oh, that's hers. I need more. I need more. Um, existence. Extraordinary. Damn it. Crimson. Memories. Dazzle. Incongruent. Contamination. Es Entropy. Essence. All right, definitely got mostly Yuri. Oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. I just walked in too. Were you were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. <clears throat> Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're willing to help out for the festival, too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great! Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food! 
You sound a bit like Siori all of a sudden. Marika, do they usually have fight squid? S squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You? Of all people? Uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monika? Uh, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Huh? You made a uh, booty, I won't never mind. Click cow coming in with the prime sub. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Hee hee hee. A little warmer in the hoodie. Hoodie and coffee. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Uh, excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room. You made looking it down enough. Oh shit. Oh shit. And back here with that sub, I do. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori! I wave my hand in front of her face. Uh, uh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You go talk to everyone else. Oh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. I wouldn't be. It just feels like you're a bit off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Terry shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Yeah. All right. You say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. The conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back to their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monika if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently, since they've been spending been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers on her desk. Cowboy, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. When he appears across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised. I'm not the one asking you, cowboy. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yes, but she'd never really write this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. He went out to, uh, he was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make y'all dinner tonight. And I was like, okay. So I let him borrow the car, run out and grab food. Uh, he forgot my address. <laughs> Basically, at Publix, doesn't know where to go. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just want to ask if you knew anything. So, I drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be reft row. Are, are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? 
I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, cowboy. E. How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Siri talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been a fool of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has always been. <laughs> You're so funny, cowboy. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. You should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her. So try not to think about it for now. Ah, uh, all right. Mika smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it. But I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monika stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? that I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I can do to besides wait for Romy. Well, off with the three months of hype. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over a book. How's my back? That's not bad. I mean, a series like this, you're not like playing like, like, it's a novel, so it's a lot easier to kind of, like, lean back. I'm just trying to find, like, a comfortable, like, relaxed position that I would just sit in, like, watching a movie or something while I'm reading through it. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. But I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. Oh, I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Rex, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I am sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yes, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Uh, oh, that's quite romantic. Huh? Sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just don't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, but that is all. Ah, I, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be so dismissive to you about her feelings. Maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Cowboy, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. 
and there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, uh, do you think there might have been something behind it after all? Hmm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Teori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I... I guess. But you do not need to put it that way. We're just good friends. That is all. Oh. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That, that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me a too much credit. I am a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as, as long as you're okay with it. Yes. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monika calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monika, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Yuri! Cowboy, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Hey, that is the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. It, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe you're so good at something, and you've never even shared it with anyone. Kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really... I had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Harry smiles sadly. Cowboy, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet place and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it, anyway. But, books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you know would just make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. 
We're deep thinkers, we're problem solvers, who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And... I got like an eye crusty from earlier. They don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, cowboy. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, cowboy. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treated you how you deserve to be treated, Uri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them! I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say that I've had at least run success. Wouldn't you? Uh. If you put it that way, it, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. This time, she's smiling as she does it. You want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light, Part 2. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows. Closer. Closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility, but I am too late. He steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding? I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. Flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. So she's... I think I'm supposed to represent a ghost in this scenario. And I'm reaching out to her. And making her feel emotion. At least that's my guess. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to you. And instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you... dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just... don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. I... I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. <sighs> Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a rot to you? 
three knots. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can Um... Poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. I mean, I can keep it. Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... You always make me feel so nice. You know, I'm not good with people, but... I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yes. Don't do worry. I think you can do a good job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yes, I am sure we will. That, Yuri timidly smiles at me and return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Alright, let's go check on Sayori. Dot, dot, dot. It's nice, I, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't really need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Uh, I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends. Just, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, cowboy. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori! Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sari cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Here we go. Yeah, no thanks! Uh, you didn't even... Next! Bitch! <gasps> Bitch! It's like, you know, real fast. Has any of y'all seen that meme with a lady that's like on Facebook and she's like, I need somebody to get me a bus to pick up my church group from the airport. And people are like, well, I have like a couple of vans you might be able to borrow, but it, you know, it seats like 10. And she's like, we got at least 20. Next. And it's like, bitch, beggars can't be choosers. That's this bitch. Next. Monica. Hi, cowboy. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Ugh. Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see you. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. Let Monika take the poem I'm holding in my hands. 
Your style's gotten so refined, cowboy. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Ugh, that's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. Makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright. I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. I do not like Monika anymore, man. Monika sounds like she's gonna fucking murder people or some shit. Monika is planning some shit. I can already tell. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. A lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever salt. And here I am. A feather. Lost to drift the sky. Victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day, I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall, and fall, and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between a thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, and all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put too much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? No, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Ah uh ha -huh. Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. In one dimension, though. Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. If you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on.
It's much more encouraging that way and will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Don't trust this bitch as far as I could throw her. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second! Is it just me? Or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez! Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Eh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh, it seems you're right. Uh, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I just thought she went to pee. Matsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! She actually wasn't feeling too well. It went home early. Is, is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I do not want to force it. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Yo, all you fucking idiots in chat, they're like, what is this game? Why are you playing this? All right, this game has better reviews than like 99 fucking percent of Steam. It apparently turns into a dark fucking whore. It has nothing to do with Paige cutting my dick off at Guru, so shut your fucking whore mouth. Astralic, you fucking calm your tits, sit, and wait till the game gets good. And everyone else that's crying in chat, either shut the fuck up or get out of chat. So I'm not gonna sit here and listen to you fucking whine while I play Doki Doki Literature Club and do goddamn voice acting for every one of these fucking characters. So if I hear one more bitch out of anyone's mouth, boom. I will knock your ass out of this fucking chat. I swear to God. Shut your fucking mouth. If you don't like it, fucking leave. <clears throat> anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations. So, let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing! That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Siri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Um... Uh... Guys? Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jesus, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she is not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Uh, a atmosphere? Um, about that, I, I 
love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll all be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, cowboy. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really be appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monika suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monique is going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be better sit on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Cowboy may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So, therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on! I never said that! How could it be so hard to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Cowboy to... Wh what are you saying? That would be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't... Just what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Cowboy to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said! Uh, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Cowboy, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hm. Very well. In that case... Everyone looks straight at me. Save! But of course, I'm gonna go with... Bam, ba -da -bam. All right, chat, another poll for you. I'm gonna run to the bathroom, you vote, and I'll be right back. Ugh. Mm.
All right, fed the cats, got some water. I said I'll be right back. Uh, and Yuri completely destroying the poles at this point. Yuri. Well, I would probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. <laughs> Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no! I was just saying... Ugh. So, you'll be helping Yuri then, cowboy? Yes. That is what I'm going to do. I, I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So, I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell Natsuki is feeling a little sour. Dude, she's like bitched at me. In the last two interactions, she's been like, mm, fuck you. And now she's butthurt that I don't want to spend time with her. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, cowboy? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I am interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Suki. What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything! But no! It's not what I meant at all. Uh... Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Cowboy picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. Kinda surprised, though. Why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I, I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said Your something bad. Legendary. Cheer hype. Suki isn't the only one surprised. Monika and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. She already had trouble with words. Trying to cheer someone up must be far from her own comfort zone. begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work out perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No! I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing, but I'm going to say this! Cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event! Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monika and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. turn around. S sorry I just realized that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I, I think that would be the best way, yes. All right then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, 
then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Uh, my house? Is, is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. Decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Cowboy. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you are overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I... I didn't realize... I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Or he thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it turned her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yes, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert, and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. I was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. Putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said, what Monika said. Is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a happy of simply entering each other's houses, like we were family. The house is quiet. Sori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her to not run down and greet me. I head up to the bedroom, where I finally found her. Sayori! Hi, cowboy. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. It's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over here like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a wrong time. Not much has really changed, has it? Harry's room is as messy as it always has been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? 
Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yes, but... Wait, how did you know that? Zeri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monika told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about festival preparations, right? Give me the booty, I want the uh, booty. That is true. Subhype for Loon on fire. What about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monika today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, uh, so it just be Yuri then? Yep. There's more silence between us. Zeri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. Finally get to the point. Man, want to start open. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you reft on Friday. Something's wrong. You can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Mary smiles, shaking her head. It's no good, cowboy. Yeah. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment. Isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayuri! I grab Sayuri by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something has happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh, 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 uh. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, cowboy. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing or what? What are you talking about? Sayori! <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, cowboy? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siri kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why? Sayori? Uh. Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I am your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, cowboy. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. 
Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why... That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Siri. And I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that is what I'll do. No, cowboy. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Siri's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt, too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one! Without thinking, I once again grab Sarah's shoulders. This time, pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, cowboy! Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. I make friends with everyone else, and that is just a bonus. Please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. C cowboy Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Zeri's arms remain at her sides. She starts stopping next to my ear. No! Don't do this to, to me! Please don't do this! Cowboy! I... Zeri barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I know is for her. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Zeri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, cowboy. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um, uh. It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. I could spend the whole day here. I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. 
If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. My surprise. So Yuri shakes her head. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. Say goodbye to Sayori. Exit her house. The way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much. We're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri! Uh -huh. Thank goodness! You're a little early. I'm sorry, I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a wrong time? No, I, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when no one answered the doorbell. You could have always texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried my, on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be more common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. But that's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yes, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. First thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be messy while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine. It's a fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure to keep track of them. So, uh, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Few things planned you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements. Huh? Yeah, that disappeared. Just the head and arms. <laughs> you know. Oh shit! How did that happen? Click the button accidentally. Hang on. Therapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will just stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience. I will leave them wanting more. 
That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, uh, in intense? I guess that is the best way to put it. Is that a, a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is, is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see... Yuri manages, rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes the switch in the bottom. Just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Oh, that just smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yes, that is a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Things flowing through the body, boys. Here we go. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think it would be perfect for sharing your poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this. So I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yes, I have it over here. You won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom, and then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's very creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, cowboy. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, uh, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. K 
carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Ugh. The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. Oh man. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It would be really fancy. Embarrassed, uh, uh, uh. Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own. No? If you promise she won't be weird at all. Yes, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. No. They're just so pretty. I I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. Uh, no, no, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how you nervous you get about sharing. It's a uh, well, interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. <laughs> dude, yeah, abort for sure. <laughs> Fucking abort. Abort, dude. <laughs> Time to get the fuck out of here. S suits me. Yes, it's a uh, kind of intense. <laughs> Uh, besides, it is a very cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Uh, sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. Feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Oh! Cowboy! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's, it's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It, it can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no! small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yo, she's gonna suck on my finger. Watch. Watch. 20 bucks says so she sucks on my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the woman a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound! Oh, no! No, this bitch is crazy! This bitch is crazy! <laughs> Fucking abort mission! Abort mission, dude! <laughs> no, no, not okay! Not okay! I fucking called it! I fucking called it! Oh god. <coughs> Yo, this is bad! This is bad! Oh man. Oh man. Okay. <coughs> I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, oh. But please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I. <coughs> Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri. It's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird. It took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, 
she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return! Oh no! 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 Why? Why? What is wrong with these teenagers? This is not okay! This is not foreplay! Foreplay does not begin with knives and licking bloody fingers! Dude! What is going- This is the cringiest thing! Uh. Like, what? No! You- No! Bad protagonist! Dude, we should have gone with Cupcake Girl. Because it would have been like she got cupcake icing on me and licked it off or something. It would have been way fucking better than the weird shit that's going on right now. Uh. Should have pulled your dick out. <laughs> Oh my god. I am wearing a Red Hot Chili Pepper shirt. <laughs> Cowboy! Did, did you really just do that? No, even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, cowboy. Yuri giggles shyly. No. Uh, Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped breathing. I... I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. Oh, I watch Nervy's life cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. <sighs> After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. Looks better than I expected, and will be very effective as a door curtain. Look great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are, are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy paint tablets. Ah, uh, that's... Right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking Yuri's device, <clears throat> I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back to my room. Yuri! Yes? I come in and see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Oh god, she cut herself, dude? Don't tell me she cuts herself. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh... No, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. <clears throat> Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, then nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it in the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Oh, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Gary smiles at me. If you say so. Rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. 
Every use is a brush and adds a few dots of different color across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? I gotta put the mic down, Axe. I'll pick up breathing otherwise. Like right now, it's picking up breathing. I'm trying to adjust it. Alright, we're good. Y yeah. It is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, and I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yuri reels back, and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? N no, I'm, I'm not hurt. It just startled me. That's all. Sorry. Sorry. I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, uh, your, your face. A droplet of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yes, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get the towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, and I damper it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. Yeah. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah! Uh. Is something wrong? It's, it's hot. I just, I didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Uh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh my hand still against Siri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is this the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Siri's gentle fingers wrapped around my list, wrist sent a tingling sensation through my arm. Suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah! Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. Yeah, there should be one. Uh, to the right of the stove in the cabinet beneath. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It is fine. is over as soon as it began. Mary picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. <clears throat> I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. Finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yes. 
You too. Are you going to add the rhetoric now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true. But won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's, it's over. Was I wrong to assume you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Oh, no, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping that we would have extra time after finishing the work. Oh. Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm, I'm sorry. I was hoping there'd be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a strong worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yes. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. That doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Give me the booty, I want the booty. Hype. Cargons, 11 months. Once Sherry packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you so much for having me today. No problem. I was glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Very fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want. You can come over. Or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, cowboy. Here he takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S say hi! <gasps> Sayori, we're just, we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, cowboy. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? It's too bad. I'm, I'm sorry. But we'll be together at the festival tomorrow, so, so th that's fine, right? Of, of course. Sayori beams. Y yeah, so, I I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. S Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come over here and see it for myself. See... What? What are you talking about? You know... Just how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. 
It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sari's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, cowboy? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, cowboy. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Moniku is right. I should just... Monika. Monika was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm, I'm scared, cowboy. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Cowboy. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... And... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember... How I said I always know what's best for you. You still bereave me. Worthlessly, Sayori nods. Even if I don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. Sayori. Oh, here we go, chat. Here we go. Chat. What's it going to be? What's it going to be, chat? <laughs> I'm going to the bathroom. Hang on. Oh man, it's a battle. It's a battle. Are we going with I love you? Are we going with the friend zone? What are we doing? Are we going to friend zone or are we going to tell her we love her? Number two is the easy route. Choose one to really messy up everything. <laughs> Yo, how fucked up are you guys trying to make this story? This is, this is literally neck and neck vote right now. Save the game. Alright, game is saved.
chat. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Friend zone her or tell her we love her. This is so close. There's three votes difference right now. This is <coughs> Doki Doki Literature Club. It is a visual novel with extremely deep themes regarding things like suicide, depression, anxiety. Um, and it starts off what looks to be very light and progressively becomes really fucking dark as the game goes on. Give her the mighty friend zone. Fuck man, this shit is people emotionally invested now. That's the point. The point is you they want you to become emotionally invested in the game because then when it gets fucked up, it hits closer to home. 56 to 53. All right, we're going to cut it off. The first one to hit 60 votes. We're just going to cut it off there because they're five votes apart right now. So four votes for number one or six votes for number two, and we're going to cut it off. Just to fuel the fire, I'm going to vote number two. Three votes for each, and it's done. Oh, wait, wait, there it is. 60 votes. 61 for I love you. <clears throat> Sayori, I love you. Uh -huh. Those are my true feelings. So, there's no way. You could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner, but spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I will accept any of your burdens as long as we continue like this every day with you by my side and I know we'll both be happy cowboy suddenly Siri wraps her arms tightly around me cowboy is this really okay yes I hold Sari in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, cowboy. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sari's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sari? supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, cowboy. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I will be there. Every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Oh, okay. I... I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So... I guess that makes the festival tomorrow. Our first date. Huh? <laughs> what, what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a, a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new. 
and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, cowboy? Siri gazes at me once more, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me. Right? Uh, I don't really understand what Siri means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns. You told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yes. I do. That's my promise. I say that. But in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her. And she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more. Or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me. I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. And we're going to save and wrap up. Because it's about time for food. Doki Doki is going to end here for now. Shit is getting juicy. Glad I stuck with it. We're finally getting to that point where things are... Things are getting... People are getting invested now. People are getting invested. <laughs> Chat. No! No, 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 no! You can't fucking stop right now! <laughs> no, no, no! You can't end it! Oh, man. I got... Dude, it, uh, fucking my buddy's making dinner for me and Paige. Dinner's about to be ready. Yep, see? He just showed up. Dinner's ready. So we're wrapping up now. Um, if I'm awake later and everyone else is asleep... I'll continue this. Rest assured, there will be more Doki Doki soon. But for now, at least, we're going to end. And No, not five minutes. I'm cutting y'all the fuck off. We're cutting off here. This is it. We will do more a different time. So, stream after food? I don't know. We'll see what happens. But y'all have a good night. Maybe I'll see you later. No promises. We'll catch you a different time. Peace.